Let's talk today about the problems with diversity and the problems with multiculturalism. You see, because these two ideas, at least as they are popularly conceived today, I think they have a number of issues, a number of fundamental flaws that are just going to make them non-starters or impossible to implement in any real, tangible way today. And I think that these issues are perhaps known, but just ignored by their proponents. So I'm going to get into them a little bit today. Now, first off, to define our terms, um, I think everyone kind of has an idea of what the popular idea of diversity and multiculturalism is. But just to make sure we're on the same page, I'm talking about diversity and multiculturalism as this idea that as many as dozens of different cultures can live together in close proximity with each other. And not only will this be okay, not only will it go along smoothly, but they will actually benefit and become more than the sum of their parts. They will benefit from this, this cultural exchange and this grabbing of all of what makes them unique and just kind of combining it, combining the best parts from all these different races. I think this is really just like a fancifully optimistic and just really, really unrealistic. And I'm going to point out what I think are the major flaws in this type of thinking. So to begin, I think there are two ways in which you could bring about this diverse, multicultural sort of society. And both of them don't work. But to split it up, uh, and I'll start with number one, the way you can implement this multicultural society is to have all the different cultures live together. This is one option. And this is going to cause a lot of problems. Now, first off, right off the bat, there's going to be cultural friction. There's going to be disparate cultures that have ideas which are just fundamentally incompatible. You know, for an example of this, think of Muslims and Christians, just for an example. And to make it even more black and white, you can think of them as both being very fundamentalist. They're going to have incompatible views. And there are only two ways in which they could, they could go about resolving this. Number one, which is obviously undesirable, they could, I guess, fight it out. They could literally get, have it come to blows, and whoever came out on top, whoever triumphed, would have their idea go forward. Again, this is obviously not ideal. This wouldn't be what the proponents of diversity and multiculturalism want. Now, the other way they can resolve their incompatible views is to compromise peacefully. Now, this obviously sounds like the better choice, but there's a problem with it. The problem with it is that it is antithetical to the fundamental idea behind promoting multiculturalism in the first place. You see, because any time a group is compromises on one of their ideals, you know, stops practicing a certain religious practice or something like that, they cease in a small way to be what they were. And you see what amplifies this problem even more is the fact that the cultural practices of your culture, which are most likely to be attacked first, which are most likely to be objected to by other cultures, are sort of the most, you know, perhaps off-color ones or the most unique ones. You know, if there was a cultural practice that was co really common among many, many different cultures, it is much less likely to be objected to than a cultural practice which is only practiced by your culture. It's much more likely to be perceived as unique and much more likely to be objected to. So not only will you have to compromise on fundamental beliefs of yours, but the ones which are perhaps most unique, most fundamental, most sacred even, are likely to be targeted first. So either way you decide to resolve this issue, be it through violence or compromise, you end up with a situation in the end in which the thesis of the multiculturalists is actually destroyed. You end up with, with a situation where there is less diversity, where either one culture is destroyed in the case of violence, or in the case of compromise, the cultures are now both less unique. Now imagine this example scaled up to a realistic scale. Say that there are 50 different cultures living within a city. Now you're not facing attacks, objections to your culture, simply from the one other culture, you're facing attacks, attacks from 49 others. There could be as many as 49, assuming they all only object to one thing. There could be 49 objections to the way your people do things. And if you were to compromise on all of these, you would cease, I think, definitely at a certain point, you would cease to be you. You would cease to be your own culture. 
So fundamentally, anytime there is an incompatible view between cultures living in close proximity to each other, there is going to be this homogenizing force acting on all of them and making it so they actually lose their diversity. So really, there was no point in bringing about the multiculturalism in the first place, because they're all just going to be, in the end, homogenized. Or they really didn't have any conflicting views in the first place, in which case they weren't really that unique. So that is the first issue kind of with living together as a means of bringing about multiculturalism and diversity is that there's that homogenizing effect, which destroys diversity. Uh, And the second part is, and this is a little touchy because it involves, you know, race. But the second part is that there is going to be, if you allow people to live in close proximity to each other, there is going to be people uh, mixing races. There's going to be people who are ethnically blended. And especially after a certain number of, of generations, there are going to be people who are very ethnically blended to the point where, for an example, you could end up being, you know, an eighth Ethiopian, an eighth Chinese, an eighth French, uh, and you, you really end up coming ethnically from all these different cultures. Now, of course, this in and of itself is totally okay. You know, this person as a human has humanity just as much as anybody else, but It's a problem for the multiculturalists because they wanted to promote diversity. They wanted to promote all these things that make these different cultures unique and, you know, kind of preserve them. Now, the problem for this person who is an eighth Ethiopian, an eighth Chinese, an eighth French, is that he's not really going to feel like he can identify with any of these different cultures. I mean, imagine if this type if this type of person was to go to Ethiopia, he wouldn't feel like he was welcomed, like he was one of them. I mean, just on the surface, he's going to look different, and therefore he's going to be treated different by your average Ethiopian. And it would kind of be odd if he really, really intensely started focusing on Ethiopian culture and identifying with Ethiopian culture, even though he's only an eighth. At a certain point, it kind of becomes a little disingenuous. Now again, I very strongly believe that there is nothing wrong with this person existing, with them being a blend of all these different races. But if they're going to identify with a culture, it needs to be with a new culture. Because again, they can't really properly identify with any of the ones which they are ostensibly from. So they would need to identify, in the case of America, they would need to identify with being an American. And indeed, this was the idea behind America always promoting assimilation. It's that when you have all these disparate people coming from these disparate countries, and they're eventually going to intermingle, creating sort of racial blended people, they're going to have to identify with a new culture. I mean, indeed, speaking for myself, I'm in a small part English, and yet I identify in no way with English culture. I identify with American culture. This is the way it should be. And this was the hope behind promoting assimilation is that anybody could come here and they could simply identify with American culture. But instead, the multiculturalists, they want you to identify strictly with whatever, you know, the culture of whatever race you happen to be from. You see, they think that assimilation is a bad thing. And yet I think it's fundamentally necessary if we're going to have this country, which is full of immigrants, which is full of all these disparate people. I think that by not first and foremost promoting a shared American culture, one that can be shared by people of any race, who come here, you are alienating people who are uh, going to and, and end up not being able to identify with any one culture too strongly. And this can be just a really awful thing, I think. So that was the first way in which you can implement this modern idea of multiculturalism. The second way, if you want to preserve the uniqueness of all these different cultures, which is their stated goal, the second way you can implement this is to enforce a system of segregation. You know, to enforce anti-miscegenation laws and to have all the people of all the different races and all the different cultures live, each of them, in their own separate communities. Right? Because if, if you want to stop this homogenizing effect of uh, people living within the same culture, living within uh, close proximity to each other, then you need to have them live apart. And this is obviously a non-starter for the idea of multiculturalism, you know, People don't, they're not going to want segregation. So this, this other way, the, the only other way in which you could feasibly implement 
this idea of multiculturalism is just a non-starter and it can't work for them. But really, these are the only two ways I see, I could possibly see, as a means of bringing about the modern idea of multiculturalism. It's either, again, you have them all live together, which is going to destroy what made any of those cultures unique. And, by the way, they're not okay with promoting the idea of assimilation and developing a new culture for all these people. Or you simply just have them live apart. We all live segregated lives, which I don't think they'd be for either. So, I don't know. I I think this idea of multiculturalism is ridiculous, and I don't understand its purpose. The only ends I could really see it serving is perhaps as a distraction from the things which actually make people different, which to me, the biggest thing is class. You know, we've we've gone from being a very, very class conscious society in, in the West and specifically in America to focusing almost entirely again on race, when in reality, class is what divides us more than anything. You know, right now, as a white guy, I could go into an inner city, I could find a group of black guys, and I could much more easily hang out with them as a group of friends than I could go into some smoke-filled room on Wall Street and hang out with a bunch of bankers there. I I would never be let in there. I would never be let in. And yet somebody who is supposedly very, very different from me, because we have this this overemphasis on race in America, someone who's supposedly very different from me, a black person, I could very easily, I guarantee you, hang out with them. Because there's less that divides us among racial lines especially in this very individualistic culture as we're supposed to be in america it's just odd that we're focusing so much on race anyways so this is these are just the fundamental flaws that i saw in the uh the idea of diversity and uh, multiculturalism as as it is talked about today let me know what you thought like comment and subscribe bros and i'll see you next time thanks for watching